last week. Just a normal sharing. I guess there are some people here that were not here last week. So if you could just talk, paraphrase, or summarize everything about last week. Anybody, just one or two. Nobody. What is this kind of energy this morning? Wow, nobody's talking. Have you forgotten what we learned last week due to the break? Good morning. Good morning, Koladi. Yes, so last week, um, did our inauguration, then we started with um, user research. Um, design research. Design research, what it entails. So when we look at the qualities of the UI and UX, UX researcher, the qualities which are empathy pragmatism and um, collaboration then later we went to research methods where we look at qualitative and quantitative research we look at some um sort analysis we look at um, um card sorting and a whole lot of uh, tools that are used thank you thank, thank you very much Baladi. um so where is the end who was that uh yeah Matrix. Okay, yes. So please yeah. you can continue from where you stopped. It was me who raised the hand. I can barely hear you. Yes, so we have gone uh, through many things last week. Okay. I started from design researcher. A quality of design researcher. We have gone through them and uh, at the method of primary research and everything. Yeah, you have done some challenges. Okay, 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 that's great. Thank you. So today we'll be talking about design process. That's a week two topic. So for design process, there are five frameworks of design process. We have the empathize, the divine, ideate, prototype, and test. Also, design process is also known as design thinking, in case you are wondering. So when they say design process or design thinking is the same thing. So basically what design process means is that everything you do while before you design, uh, um, during your design, and after you design. So design process is the process, the, the, the gradual step you took during, before, and after your, des uh, your design. So there are five frameworks. We have the empathize, divine, ideate, prototype, and test. We've already talked about empathize. So um, I made sure that all these points are very short because we've already talked more about it last week. So. How to empathize with users? Who wants to read out number one? Yes, please go on. Ask a lot of questions. Yes. As a designer, you cannot make assumptions about the needs of your user. Instead, ask your users directly about their needs and wants. Exactly. So, um, during your interview, when you want to ask your interviewers, um, when you want to um, get research from interviewers, you have to ask them a lot of questions. Don't just assume that, okay, this is what they want or this is what they lack. No, you can never, you cannot, you cannot, you can, the best way to put yourself in their shoes is when you understand them. And the best way to understand them is when they, when you ask them questions and they give you feedback, ask questions. If you know, for people that are used to have knowledge, they 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 ask questions a lot. People that people that are very conversant, people that people that gain ideas and knowledge about things, they don't just know it. They ask questions. They they search. They ask. They 
they walk up to people and ask them questions so if you want to gain if you want to know something you have to ask a lot of questions so you can as a designer you cannot just assume that okay this person probably needs um, um an, an app that we deliver no you have to ask them question what do you want okay what what are you open for what do you expect those kind of questions we make them talk and with their feedback you understand what they are trying to say so number two please who wants to read number two color day please read is it there please we have a long 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 way to go okay continue please Go on, go on. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Become more observant. Take okay. detailed notes or record, record sessions on how they interact with you or your product. Thank you very much. So, part of empathizing with users is becoming more observant. Please mute. Thank you. So becoming more observant when you want to take when you want to um, when you are when you are in an interview and you are trying to interview someone, take notes. Be with your be with your writing materials because you cannot you cannot remember everything they say. Even if you are not with your writing materials, take um, your phone and record it because there there there, there are some biases we call them implicit bias and um, recall bias. Sometimes you might not even remember. Sometimes it might be the first thing they said that you remember, or probably the last. So it's not everything. Our brain is not computer. So you have to record everything they say. Take note of their body language. Take note of how they interact with your product if you've already made the product. Because this framework is not um is actually um is step by step, but you can still go back. So let me let me explain what i'm saying from empathize you move to divine from divine you move to ideate from ideate you can still go back to divine does anybody understand what i'm saying from from ideate if you move to prototype you can still go back to ideate from prototype if you move to test you can still go back to prototype it's like a continual circle so even if you've already tested you can still go back and check how they interact with your product their body language was that was their face squeezing where they like what's this so all these things are the things that you are you ought to take notes when you, if you really want to empathize with your users so um anybody who wants to read the third screen for us third point okay draw yeah. some good one all right be an active listener be fully active. concentrate understand and remember what is being said by the users you are interacting with it helps to get impartial feedbacks yes be an active listener most of us here do not know how to listen after if, if someone is talking to you for like um for like 10 minutes the next thing you're already squeezing your face you're already doing all your body language to make that person know that you're already tired with what they are saying. If you want to be interested with your users in, in what your users are saying, you have to concentrate fully. And you know, we humans, we understand body language. If I'm talking to you and you are probably distracted or you are doing, you are just, you are just fidgeting or you are pressing your phone or something, I will hold back. I will not say what I want to say before. I want, if even if I want to give you insights, I want to tell you my frustration. I want to tell you my problems. I will not tell you again. I will just be looking at you. So the same.
I can't hear anything though. Okay, I think our network is is somehow down. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. I think our network is somehow down. So let's wait a bit for a uh, bit. Probably I should share the screen for her, maybe, so that the load can be a little bit uh, easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's wait a bit for her. So when she comes, she can just continue from here. Is that cool? But come back. So apparently, I have shared the screen. You can just. Okay, sorry, guys. I lost my connection. So okay. we were talking about being an active, be an active listener, right? Yes. So I think I stopped that understanding. I emphasize the word understand. Yeah. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. We can. Okay, so I, I I don't know if you remembered. I said if you don't understand what your users are telling you, then you will not be able to design a solution appropriate for them. Do you remember when I said that? Or oh, I've lost my connection then. You remember you said this okay. mentioned it. Okay, thank you. So. When I, I also said that, I also said that as human, we understand body languages. If I'm talking and you are doing something else, I will not be able to communicate effectively with you anymore. So it's the same thing when you are talking to your interview or when they are talking to you, you have to fully concentrate and focus on what they are saying and, 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 and give body language, positive body languages like nodding, um, saying, okay, okay, I want to know more. Can you tell me more? Urging them to give you more feedbacks. Helps, helps you to understand better what they are saying. So who wants to read the next point, please? Okay, okay go on. Request, request input. Feedbacks from friends or colleagues are mostly biased. Thoughts positive to support, request input from a variety of sources and diverse group of users. Yes, thank you. So, um, starting up as a UI UX designer, when you make your first design or so, you mostly might not have 
um, a wide range of people that will give feedbacks on your design. So in turn, you have to turn to your family, your friends. And the downside is that these people will tell you, oh, it's good, look at your design, wow, a bad designer or something. But it's not supposed to be. You're not supposed to turn to your friends or family. You can just show them that, okay, this is what I designed. But they're not the one that should give you feedbacks on your design, except if probably they are also in the field and maybe they are really really good in the field okay then they can give you feedbacks based on their knowledge but if they are not you will not be able to know the problem because all they will do is that they will support you and say wow it's nice but you have to go to users that will not be biased users that um the design the what you design are are prominent too so that you can hear honest feedback from them. So the next point, please. Please go on. I have an uncle mind. As a user UX designer, set biases aside, better empathize with users or others. Yes, I have an open mind. So um let me say okay. So probably and for just for an example you are designing a pregnancy or mother app so you're not looking for users or people that you interview so you now went for strictly female because okay you feel like it's only female that will understand it's a gender something you cannot be biased like that there will be men to be men we are, will be husband men are there are men that are husband to pregnant women so they too we want to know what's up in your design. You can ask them for feedback to what they expect from that app. So you cannot be you, you cannot be biased and say, okay, this 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 particular app is for some people. You might not know. You might not know. So keep an open mind. Keep an open mind. It is very 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 important. And the last point is keep current on UX research. Research is always changing. It is evolving. The, the all the list of all the list of um researches that we gave you last week they say in in in, in the next one year you see other other design other other design inputs other design methods so we cannot just stay on it cannot be outdated you have to evolve you have to you have to go with the trend there are lots of lots of design trends a lot of uh, ui trends ux trends you have to keep up or else you just be outdated and there is nothing there is nothing like being an outdated ui ux designer that that person is not going anywhere so next slide please sir Sir. Have I lost my connection again? No. No, no. I don't know what happened. No, we can hear you. Oh, I'm thank sharing, you. I'm sharing it, but it's showing the old one. Oh. Imagine. Let me stop sharing again. I don't know what happened. Sorry, one minute, please. Okay. Yes, thank you, sir. So, like I said, it's a process. The design process are step by step things that you do before, during, and after your design. So actually the first thing you are going to do when design is to do research, which we've learned last week, then the persona. You've all created your persona, right? From the random project generator. Yes or no? I need answers, please. 
Okay. Only you. I'm only saying someone, only one person. So none of you did um, the personal. I expected that you guys will go back and do your own personal own, apart from the group one. But anyway, so from your persona, you have to derive an empathy map. Oh, you were you weren't in the last class. Okay. All right. From your persona, you have to derive an empathy map. It says an empathy map is an easily understood chart that explains everything designers have learned about types of users by visualizing their thoughts, feelings, and behavior. It is divided into four quadrants, what the user says, does, think, and feel. The empathy map helps to identify areas where users need are not being meant. Uh, so I would like to present the empathy map so they would know how it looks like. All right. So can you all see my screen? Yes. Yes, I think I can. Okay, let me zoom in. So this is fake jam actually. I'm presenting it because you are going to do your own. So let's say this is a, this is a picture for a user. You can change it here. Don't worry. I would if if you wait a minute. As everybody open their Figma account. No. No. Okay. So um. Yes, quick, I have. But some people have not. So quick, uh, go to open your browser and go to www.figma.com. and create your account. It's not add. Very simple, just create an account because you're going to be using Figma. There's a lot we have to cover. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Uh, okay, I believe you've all, good. I believe you've all opened an account. So this is what, if 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 you want to check for if you open Figma, there's Fig Jam in Figma. Like this is my own Figma, so all I have to do is just click on. So it show show me if I want to do. Can you still see my screen? Yes, we can. Yes, yes. yes we can. So it's to show you if you want to design or Fig Jam. So you can just click on Fig Jam. Then go here. This is where the templates are. And search for um, empathy map. Okay, there's one here. So, so this, this is what we need. Says, things, does, and feel. So all these things you can get from your persona. So um the persona that we did um last week, uh, a lot of people were not here. Anyway, uh so how will we go about this? Anyway, from the persona we understood we got a, from the random project generator, we got a project about someone who wants handcrafted or do you guys remember about the persona? Oh. Okay, I guess I need to, I guess I need to present that one too. You said what? I, uh, the personnel, I think your name is Mia, and Maya. Or... Yes, Maya, yes, yeah, Maya. good, you were in class. 
I don't know if people are not being the people that are responsive are not much. Yes, education like PhD in mathematics, hometown yeah, legal. I remember. Yeah, yes. But what about the rest? Anyway, I would let me just. So this is a persona. Her name is Maya. She's a 24 year old PhD in mathematics, Lagos single project manager at Axe City. So does it does this bring back um, refreshing memory now? Mm -hmm. Yes. So she says that I like products and made by people because they are different and can't be found anywhere. So in your empathy map, this is what she says. So this will be at says. You now we says empathy maps as says, feel, does, and think. Right? Are you following me? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So Empathy map it consists of four quadrants: think, says, feel, and does. So in the says, it is from your persona that you understand these things. So from your persona, this is what she says. She says that product, she likes handmade products. What does she think? She thinks that admin products are different and can't be found anywhere. And feeling. She feels frustrated because she has problems with connecting to your internet. She has problems with credibility. She has problems with online payment gateway. I hope you guys really understand these things because you are going to do you are going to do your own. Okay. So you've seen what an empathy map is, right? Or she likes to present it again. I need answers, please. And um, do you, yes, who wants to talk, please? So please present it again. Okay. So do we all know how, how to get to this fig jam in your Figma account? When you get to your Figma, do you know how to, to get to fig jam? No. Do we all know? Okay. Let's, let's yes, 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 yes. Someone said she he doesn't, so. Oh, so I've already signed in. So Probably if you've not signed in, you can just sign in like that and then go to your Figma file. So do you understand now? Yes, you are getting it. So just click on Figma file.
So I don't know what's wrong with this. But you get the gist, right? Uh, I need answers actually. No emoji. Thank you for the thumbs up. Bro. I need answers. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Davis, yes, um, can, can the emit um, present again? Okay. Where, where do we stop? At empathy map. All right. Empathy map. Um, Yep. Oh, yep. So, um, that's everything about empathy map. So then we are moving on to user stories. A user story. Okay, someone should please read. Katrin, please. Okay. A user story is a functional one. A user story is a functional one sentence story told from the person's point of view to inspire and inform the brand decision. It introduces the user, lays out the obstacles, and sees their ultimate goal. So, thank you very much. From the empathy map and from the persona, the next thing you have to do is to, divide, to derive an, a user story. So it's a user story that will help you to understand what the problem is and, how, uh, and what the user wants. So it says it's a fictional one sentence story told from the persona's point of view to inspire and inform design decisions. So I'm going to give you a formula for the user story. Next slide, sir. I don't know why this thing is not moving. Okay, sorry. Let me stop sharing again. I'm already on next slide. Like, I hope you guys are writing some things down. <laughs> I hope. Yes. All right. So the formula for user story is as a dash. I want to dash so that dash. So the first dash is type of user. So who are you designing for? Like who is your user? The second dash is for action. What the user hopes will happen. And the third dash is benefit. Why do user want the action to happen? So this formula is straightforward, very concise. You know what to do. You know what's going on. And even if you present this for your, all these things are actually to present for stakeholders too. So they will know, because they're not the one designing for you. They did not go with you for the interview. They did not go with you for the research. So all these things are to present. And to get your message across to them, smartly you need a very concise and short straightforward user story so the sample that i gave was i as an online shopper online shopper is a type of the user so definitely since you've seen online shopper they will know that okay the digital product you want to design is an e-commerce app because it says shopping online shopper so it's definitely an e-commerce app i want to receive notification when the items arrive. So receiving a notification is the action. Then why? So that I can pick it up right away. So what this user wants is a e-commerce app that has notification, um, um, that, 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 uh, a notification alert that will notify him when his delivery is, is, is here already very straight so nobody will see this kind of user story and say ask you that ah, what does the user want no it's not possible this is very concise and straightforward next slide sir
He's not moving. So the next slide, we have the edge cases. So this, this is a real situation or an unexpected problem that interprets a standard user experience. A designer goal is to keep all users on the happy path. That is a user story with a happy ending, no issues, everything goes as planned. So um, in, in, in another word, edge cases are unexpected problems. So as a designer, we, 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 um, we've been taught to know everything, like expect everything, understand that anything might happen at any case, at, at any point in time, and you should have designed a counteracting solutions. So in case, don't just expect that, okay, maybe you want to swipe, okay, for, for this thing that Mr. David is presenting, don't just expect that all users will know that they will swipe. Some users might want to use the keyboard. So if you if you just um, design a swipe navigation and you did not design keyboard, what if the person does not know how to swipe? So in those kind of things, you have to design counteracting solutions to them. Okay, if this person does not swipe, okay, I've designed a keyboard motion for it if the person does not double tap i've designed a button for it do you understand what i'm saying so edge cases those kind of problems you, you don't want your users to face them because they'll be frustrated users are not really they are not satisfied they will not think that okay i did sign up and it it was easy i did um profile it was easy but when i wanted to check out it was not easy they will abandon the app they will say the app is not even good. You will see reviews. It's not even good. I can't check out. I can't do this. I can't do that. They will not remember all the, the ones that they've been doing that were successful. So you have to to make to keep your users on the happy path, to keep your um your digital product on high rating. You have to think of possibilities, possibilities, possible edge cases. You have to think, you have to, you have to keep your mind sharp. So that's what edge cases are. Then the next things are user journey map. So this user journey map, we help you to know more about edge cases. But before that, let's talk about user journey map. A user journey map is a series of experiences a user has and as as they achieve a specific goal. User journey builds up the personas and stories you've created. So from the story you've created and from the persona, you have to design a user journey map too. I'll have to trouble Mr. David to stop presenting so I can present the user journey map. Thank you, sir. So this is a journey map, also on FigJam. So um, this is how it happens. For every action, you just put um, um, say action one. And one of the tags is sign up. Sign up. Uh, or oh, let me say, let's say create account. Create account. Is who's raising up the hand? Does anybody have anything to say? Nobody. Okay. Um, create accounts. What are the tasks and notification? 
I say change password to I don't know. Let's just leave it as to his account. So what are the you have to fill in the emotions too? Felt Sign up was easy to navigate. Sign up was easy to navigate and Mm, say um sign up was easy, easy to navigate. Okay, then another emotions creating password was tedious and I felt confused. Probably, uh, you know, uh, when you are uh, when you want to create a password, there are some apps that will tell you, okay, must be like 10, 10, 10 characters, one uppercase, another one lowercase, another one um, special number, special character, all those kind of stuff. So, so yeah, it has to improve. Make creating password easier or generate password for users. So this is like number one. So from here, I've already thought of what could be the problem that they could face that's why i said user journey map also explain edge cases because i just remember that sometimes when i want to create an app and okay i've already signed up they've asked for my email account they've asked for my phone number it was easy but the next thing create accounts i just find out that they will tell me that password is not strong password is not strong enough password is not strong enough so sometimes it will be it could be tedious, especially when the password has to be ten characters. How can I think of a password that is ten characters? So those kind of things. I just thought of that. That okay, they might actually face this thing. So it has to improve. How can I improve on this? Make creating password easier, or generate password for users. There are some apps that will just generate um password for the user, so that it would be very very easy. Do you understand? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So for 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 character, you can just put an emoji or something. Yeah, but it's not it's not actually necessary. But if you want, if you want to design your own, because you are going to create your own. So if you want to design your own, you can do that. So you can find that in templates too. It's not add. Search for user journey map. It's not add. So yeah, that's for user journey map. So now we are moving on to problem statements. Can you see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Yes, thank you. So problem statement, this is a clear description of user's needs. So this problem statement is the most important in before designing phase. Very, very important. Because this is exactly what um, stakeholders or other members of the teams, like the designer, every uh, I said designer the developer the um project manager this is what they want to see 
a problem statement. What is the problem? What is that problem that problem that we want to solve? So this is the formula. Dash is a slash and dash who needs dash. I hope you're all seeing my screen. Because if you're not seeing it, it just be like I'm talking nonsense. I need yes. answer, so thank you. Because dash. So the first dash is username. At that point, since you've already cre created an, a persona, the person must have a name. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it would be more user centered. It would be more. It would be more like the, the the thing is coming to life. The the problem statement must have a name attached, preferably the name of your persona. So let's just say, using our earlier persona, I can say Maya is a busy manager or a busy executive or a busy working class who needs a long lasting battery laptop because she's always in need she's always working something like that so you have to look is inside the personnel that you find the user character and you from from the person also you can also get their needs and the insights do you understand what i'm saying or is it too much and that yes uh, we are going we are going to continue are you sure i get i feel like some people are not talking because they feel like they don't understand and they don't want to drag the class please drag the class is there anything that you don't understand nobody okay so the example i have here is arnold is a busy executive who need an easy app okay who is raising up their hand okay princess please go on when you in the class earlier i i, I asked of you okay yes i think my network is having an issue okay. so sorry i wanted to ask uh, this problem statement, user story, and um, all of them are having similar um, distance. So what's like a distinct difference between all of them? Yeah, it's there actually. For like the user story now, it does not contain, it does not contain um, a name. So user story can just comprise a lot, like it's not specific. It might, it might even have a user story before creating your personal. So it says as a, like the example I gave as an online shopper, I want to receive notifications when the item arrives uh, so that I can pick it up right away. But this problem statement is very specific to that user. It has a name. Arnold is a busy executive who needs an easy app experience to hire a dog walker because it's not so tech savvy. Like it does not know how to use, use a mobile phone. It does not know how to use digital products. So this is one is more specific. It allows you to know exactly, see the user story does not really give you the main point of what you need to focus on. But this one is very straightforward. It needs easy navigation. That is what you're going to focus on when you're designing. You're not going to do an, an overly extra navigation. You're not going to do some, something extra. Just make it simple and put everything that they need at um, maybe on the dashboard or everything. Maybe for that, for that dog walking app, everything that they need. Order a dog walker, this, 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 that. You have to put it on the dashboard so that it should not be hard to navigate. It should not be hard to discover things. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the problem statement is more specific. It allows you to know the problem and what you should focus on. I hope you understand. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. So um, on the, now we've left. Oh, so we're already on design for that problem statement. You know, we said um, the frameworks of design process is empathize divine ideas prototype and test so the divine process is the problem statement 
So the next process is the ideate. Since ideation is a process of generating a broad set of ideas on a given topic with no attempt to judge or evaluate them. So in this ideate, like the word is idea. In this ideating process, you have loads of ideas. You don't actually focus on one. You don't, you should not necessarily have one way of solving the problem Yeah, You can have like a million way of solving the problem. I just just be popping into your head. I just just be popping into your head. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I can do it like this. I can do it like this. I can do the app like this. I can do the app like this. Okay, how can I, how can I, how can I, how can I make the the app to navigate easily? Okay, I can use buttons, I can use swipe, I can you can just have different kind of ideas for your digital products at that moment. You don't have to narrow everything to one. No. This is a process that this 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 design process, you have to have lots of ideas before you start you will not start narrowing down. But for starting, you have to have lots of ideas. Or else you 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 be constricted to one. So it says part of being a designer means intentionally exploring as many as possible, knowing that some of them or even most of them won't work. Even if you feel like okay, this one is not good, just 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 note it down. Just note it down somewhere. Even if you feel it's not good, just note it down somewhere. But here, here is how to evaluate your ideas. First, you know that all the ideas that you want to, you, you that pops into your head for solving a particular problem, you have to note everything down first. Then you now evaluate. And how do you evaluate ideas? There are three ways to evaluate your ideas. Number one, is it feasible? That is technically possible to build. So one of the problems that designer have with developer is that designers they will design some things that developers will not be able to build and that's the problem so you can you don't, you don't just go to pin interest or go to dribble and just copy one design one extra extra design like that no you have to think it from the developer's perspective will it be technically possible to build number two is it desirable like is the out of your ideas though is that the best at solving the user's problem like you have to you, this is the point where you have to take all maybe probably you have like five ideas in in solving that problem so you have to take them one by one by one and check okay is this the best is this the best that i've got is this the best i've got then the third one is is it viable that one means is it financially beneficial for business you have to think of from the point of that's that's okay, what's what's this last um point talking about here? Does anybody remember from the characteristics of a UX designer? Okay, it's it's the third one saying it's viable, financially beneficial for business. So that means so I asked, end point. I, okay, I want to, I'm trying to answer the question. Okay. Okay. Um, as a designer, you're meant to design um, the design that we use that we use center. So in pleasing the the user, we ought to be sure that the design process will also be beneficial for business. Mm. We also make profit for the company that we're trying to design for. Yeah. Are you asking a question? I thought you wanted like someone to help, like, like fix something on the third one. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That was. I said, does this remind you of something? Like from the characteristics of a UX researcher, does this remind you of something? Can I say There's something? a word for it. Yeah, you said what? Yeah. Is the word is pragmatism. Design? Yes. Thank you very much. Pragmatism. Pragmatism is is you know the situation whereby a designer uh, keeps in mind the user, the user, and then the goal of the business. Yes. The thank you very design. very very much. So okay. you have to be pragmatic when you are choosing the ideas that you want to you want to choose when you are evaluating ideas that you want to choose. You have to be pragmatic. Okay. We, is this financially beneficial for the business that you want to? you are designing for 
So um, next slide. During that value, uh, during the design process, the ideation process, you have to look, you have to do value proposition to. So what is value proposition? This is the reason why a consumer should use your product or services. So if if um, if you've I, you've drafted your ideas that you want to use, and you've actually taken out one out of the ten, you've evaluated the based on the visibility, the uh, desirability, and um, what's the last one here, and the viability. And okay, you've seen also you've seen one idea. Say okay, this idea is the best the next thing you are going to do is to create value proposition value proposition is the reason why a consumer should use your products or services so what are the things what are the example of value proposition like say um free delivery services um that's that's for e-commerce app say for fintech you can say um no transaction okay i'm not even going to list it so what's What's the value proposition of OP? Who can who can answer that? Yes, princess. What's the value? Please answer the question. Yeah, um, free transfer, um, free transfer option. Yeah, you make free transfer, transfer option. Free. Okay. What about yeah, speed transaction? Thank you very much. So, what about CUDA? There's one distinct thing about CUDA and OP. So what's the value proposition of CUDA? Don't say free transaction again. You know. There's another thing for CUDA. Yes, ma'am. I don't know of CUDA, but that of OP, they do um, daily reward. Daily reward, good, good, yes, daily reward. So those are value proposition. For CUDA, they have free, um, yeah, cashback too. They have um, uh, debit cards, free delivery of their debit card that they can use. Most of all these, um, all these Ope, uh, Pampe, stuff like that, they don't have debit cards. So those, they are, these are the value proposition that you have to list out. Okay, what will I put in my products that will make users care? I'll make people say, mm, okay, this one is good too. So the reason why most people choose all these all these bank apps above normal regular bank apps is because of the speed transaction, of the cashback, of the all those things, free transaction, all those things that what people what made user care, and they they prefer it as a preferable solution to apps like Access Bank um Polaris bank and something like that so in building value proposition what are the steps that you have to take step one describe your product features and benefits product features and benefits actually um features and benefits are a tad bit different from each other so features could be like um say ease of use easy navigation good support like when you when you when you call their customer care they will always answer you and benefits could be like all those ones all those free cashback um free transaction and stuff like that do you understand what i'm saying have i explained product um features and benefits for you yes Yes, thank you. We are using that OP for for example. We says okay, what are what are the features of OP? Uh, let me say CUDA. What are the features of CUDA? Okay, they have a um, debit card, they have um other um uh, other currencies, those are features like wallet system, those are features. So what are the benefits? Free first, um, is it first 30 or how many? How many transactions is free in Kuda? 25. 25, is that 25? Yeah, wow. so first 25. So, those, those are the benefits free delivery of 
um, debit card. Those are the benefits. Do you understand now? Yes. Mm, the year is very weak. Okay, let me let me talk about another thing. Say Jumia. Okay, what are the features of Jumia? Um, you can order online. Free okay, online, online order. To, to get navigation. products. Is navigation okay. okay and uh then for the benefits i think it will probably be one of them will be pay on delivery mm. which i think is one of the then they have various payment options and this card as well mm. good good and the fact that they have to even uh bring it to your doorstep i think it's a benefit yes yes yeah. yes yes good you've said everything so step two Explain the value of the product. Categorize it. Uh, categorize it under accessibility, professional experience, cost, reliability, etc. So everything that you've said, you have to categorize it into accessibility. Like that, um, ease of use will be under accessibility. Um, con good contact, uh, good support will be under, under accessibility. Then free transaction will be under costs. The re reliability should be about um, great display of items um, and the strength, like the security, stuff like that. Then step three, connect the features and benefits with the needs of your user. Step four, review your official value proposition. Yeah, that is, you have to make a document for it. So scope the competition. In the in, in the ideation phase, the most important part of it is competitive audit. Competitive audit is an overview of your customer's strength and weakness. It consists of a list of direct and indirect competitors. So it's like SWOT analysis, but this was like a different skill. For your competitive audit, you have a direct and indirect competitors, at least like two two. So like two will be direct, two will be indirect. So what are direct competitors? Direct competitors have offerings, meaning products, services, or features that are similar to yours and focus on the same audience. So the direct direct um, competition of, of um, OP is like all this spam pay, um, Kuda and stuff because they have the same product. They have the, they offer the same services. They have very very similar features, and they offer it to the same audience. So they are direct competitors. They always strive to outdo each other. Then when we talk about indirect competitors, they have similar set of offerings, but offer a different audience or focus on different audience, or they have different they offer different sets of offering and focuses on the same audience so in the eyes competitors are in the same way in two ways let's talk about maybe um um okay let's talk about restaurant maybe there's a okay 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 shop rights say shop rights as an app their indirect competitor will be Target, Target in, in Canada. ShopRite is also, uh, their, their, apps, their app will probably sell the same thing, like uh, is, a, is a mall, so same as Target, but they are, not in this, this, and they are not in the same location. So they will not affect each other. But they are also your competitors because there are some things that you see from them that you can implement and make it better and make your own products better. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm just using ShopRite and Target and as an as an example. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Are you people? I you people? Are you people in this class? Have I been talking to myself all the while? No, no, no. I understand what you're saying. Yes, I'm with you. I understand. Yeah. Just two people. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. 
So, um, yeah, we are talking about indirect competitors. I hope you do understand. Oh, it's the same thing. So, steps to conduct a competitive audit. Number one, outline the goal for your competitive audit. It can help to break down your goals into different product aspects. You want to compare, e.g., um, viewing e commerce websites by comparing their shopping experience or delivery. So, what this place is actually saying is that you have to list out what you want to compare from your competitors? Is it their delivery that you want to compare? Is it the transaction that you want to compare? Is it the, is it the, um, is it the interface that you want to compare? You have to list it out so you know beforehand. Number two is create a spreadsheet with the list of your competitors. You should aim to include five to 10 competitors in your list. Anyhow, four to 10, five to 10, anyhow. But it should not be less than four or less than five. Uh, sorry, it should not be less than four, sorry. And number three, call out specific aspects you want to compare. This list of aspects should align with your goal for the audit. Visit each other's, each competitor's website or app and take notes about the aspects. Analyze your findings. We, I am sure I, I should have put all these things into the slide, but the slide were getting too much and I don't want to overcrowd the slide. So I'm going to look for a competitive audit that I have here. A minute, please. So can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yeah, so yeah. you can you yes. can yeah, direct, indirect, direct, direct. So actually this um this app Educat is um it's one of the apps that we are building in Pyramid. So what it basically does is it helps um, students from Nigeria to be able to process uh, their visa service fee and pay their tuition fee in abroad. So all these apps also do the same thing. So yeah, if you have the competitor type, the location, the product offering. As you can see, cross-border transaction. Cross, if you see the direct, you see cross-border transaction, cross-border tuition, cross-border tuition. But for the indirect, it's actually different. But the, why, the reason that it's part of is the competition is that it's, it's for international students. Like, all these things are for international students. So it's because this particular one too is for international students, that, that was why it made the courts. Then you write the website of them, then business, business size, all of them, they are large. Then target audience, international students, international students, international students. That's, that's why they are all competitors because they focus more on they, they all focus on international students. So the unique value proposition for Flywire, it offers colleagues, uh, colleges in the US a way to collect funds from students abroad. It accepts wire transfer. So these are unique value proposition. So you have to look for the unique value proposition of your competitors. Then this one is about their website. How good is it? Is it outstanding? So for Flywire, it's outstanding. For S travel money is good. For pay for me, outstanding, outstanding. Then you have to check their mobile too. We are going to check the interfaces with comments. This one said user flow is not detailed. This one needs work. Does not does not have an app version. There is this one good, easy to use, modern minimalistic design. 
So this one said limited numbers of features. So uh, you're going to check for the user flow, the navigation, the brand identity. So for Flyerwire, it has great graphics, consistent use of colors, stuff like that. You have to, you have to do, is their color consistent? Is the, Do they use blue logo? Yeah, and use red logo, yeah. Is this splendid? Is it good? So you're, everything you're going to write is here. So when you 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 comment on it like um like when you see this one now less process so you, you know in your own art that okay when you are designing your own digital project it must have less process too because you actually rate this one good because of the process that is less this one says requires tech savviness to navigate through and that's a minus. It's no it, navigating through a digital product should not require brain, brain like that. It should not be tedious, it should not be heavy for it should just be something that you just do. Very simple, easy to navigate. If it is required tech savviness, if it requires um even intellectual capacity that is high like that, people will not want to who wants why will you want to to um use an app and start thinking 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 no people will not people will not people know people will be frustrated they will not use the app so i this is what a competitive audit is i'm going to share this link so you can use it for your own app when you get the prompt so do you have a problem here confusion anything else So you can call my attention before we go to the next thing. Are you seeing my screen? Yes. 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 Okay, so there is no comment, no question. You understand? Yeah, that's cool. I'm sorry, please. Uh, is there how you can make the template available for us? Sure, I will. I will share this link later, after the class. Thank you. So, no questions, yeah? No. That's that's actually suspicious, but okay. Moving to the next slide. A user flow. Still on the ideation. Process. Yeah. Is anybody talking to me? Mm -hmm. Right. Is there is anybody saying something? Okay, I guess not. A user flow. So what's the user flow? A user flow is a part taken by Twitter user or an app or a website so they can complete on it should be on that's a mistake the parts taken by a typical user on an app or a website so they can complete a task from start to finish the goal is to map how users achieve a specific goal as they move through a product that way we have a clear overview of the product's functionality before the design process begins they include shapes that represent different interactions. So a user flow is like a map. Let me let me present that too. So this is what a user flow looks like. It doesn't have to be this colorful, but trust Figma, they will provide you with everything that you need. So they have a, a template here. So this is open mobile app. If you are logged in, to move to yes. If you are not logged in, move to no. 
at this login. So the year should be like uh, dashboard. So on the dashboard, you can move to say, um, okay, let's talk about FinTech app now. You can move to transfer. And add your yes or no year to So, so I'm like, um, And if it is a no, do you understand what I just did here? Yes, ma. So it does not have to be this much. You can just delete all these ones. Um, so this is this is simple. So this is a simple, very straightforward user flow. And what does the user want to do? He wants to transfer money. So from open mobile app, login, yes, go to the dashboard already. If the person is not logging, no, then they log in. From login, they move to dashboard back. Then from dashboard, they select transfer. And if they if they confirm that transfer, then it will give them a congratulatory message of money sent. If they press no, they will go back to transfer. Very straightforward. So this is what a user flow is. Any question? Or oh, let's say they go back to dashboard. So any question? I'm expecting a question actually. So sorry. Ma. Yes, please go on. After the money spent um, wireframe, where will it take them to? There should be a kind of action that will take them back to the dashboard. Mm. You can design, you are the one designing your app. 
I might say my own app does not take them back to dashboard. They just say, um, do you want to perform another option? Okay. Or track money. Probably if you're using a, a cross-border, if it was be a cross-border, cross-border or a Bitcoin or something. So it can be like track money or a question that will give them that go back to home. So it's it's your app. You're the one that knows how you want to do it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I get it. Okay. So anybody else? Do you understand? Are you sure you understand these things? If you don't yeah. understand, say it and we'll go right again. Very simple. Okay, so as not to waste our time because we have a lot to do actually. Then we have a storyboard. So you've already designed your user flow. The next thing you have is a storyboard. So a storyboard is a series of panel or frames that visually describe and explore a user experience with a product. What are the elements of a storyboard? We have the character, the scene, the plot, and the narrative. So what are the characters? Characters are the user in your story. What is the scene? helps us to imagine the user's environment, the plot, the benefit or solution of the design, the narrative, the user's need or problem, and how the design will solve the problem. So we have types of storyboard. We have the big picture storyboard and the close-up storyboard. So it says the big picture storyboard focuses on the user's experience, their emotions, what is going on in their head as they are doing it. And the close-up storyboard focuses on the product. I would like to tell you that this storyboard is, you have to sketch it yourself. So you, you sketch a storyboard of what the user will experience. See, UX is, is a long process, but it is very, very, very interesting. I should, I should have a storyboard around here. So I'm coming, stick around. So this is a close-up storyboard. Can you see? Can you see what I'm presenting? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, so please don't mind my drawing. Yes, we can. But this, this is what the storyboard looks like. So here. It says Deborah, I will read it out in case you cannot see it. it says Deborah opens up the app. Deborah used to be the person is the person that I used for as you can see, is an easy to use menu and ordering app to quickly order food with sweet delivery. So that is what the project was about. So this is a close-up storyboard. Deborah opens up the app. This is our finger open up, opening up the app. Select navigation. This 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 is my hamburger navigation. So this is a this is a storyboard. It it tells you what we happened, what we happen in your design. So when you open the application, it will take you to the dashboard, and this is the hamburger. You can see the profile is right here and the icons. So from here, it will show you 
e menu showcase it is show you the menu says so the bra opens e menu and select food yeah the bra checks out on our food option and add it to cart then we have payment confirm the bra pays and confirms payment on the app then you can see congratulations your order is on the way i've not designed the app yet at that at this stage but i've already added in mind that this is what this is how the app will look like so this is close-up storyboard but this the big picture storyboard we focus on user experience and the emotions it will tell you that okay at first the user was sad because they were hungry and i'm i'm using the the menu food food menu app that i was that i just showed you for an example so to first show you that okay the persona is sad but then an idea struck him that okay he thought about ordering from this app do you understand what i'm saying so all these things will be in a sketch but we are not really focusing on the story but i just want you to, guys to know it's not everything here that we're going to use but apart from this boot camp we are going to go out there and do some stuff so i just want you to have basic knowledge of all these things so you might not necessarily use it in this boot camp but i still want you guys to know about storyboard so they will not ask you that okay what's the storyboard and you'll be like ah, what's what's what does storyboard mean is that one inside ui ux2 it is and i'm telling you now so next one this is the prototype this is this is where we've come to stay the wireframe everybody have heard about wireframes yes or no yes or no yes 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 so the wireframe is like the basic level of design wireframe is a design okay a design can have different level of fidelity in us fidelity means how closely a design matches the look and the feel of a final product so we have low fidelity and we have high fidelity so the low fidelity has a lower amount of complexity complexity and is less refined or polished we call low fidelity design low fi for short but for high fidelity this one is much more closer to how the design is supposed to look and we call it i5 for short so what is a fire wireframe a wireframe is a basic outline of a digital experience like an app or website uh we're not going to be talking about wireframe fully today but i just want you guys to know probably tom uh, tomorrow we'll be designing wireframes as i'm designing mine you open your figma and design yours too and then next we have web app site maps a web website map is a visual representation of the website stage, uh, page hierarchy and structure. It is, a, it is a planning tool used by designer and de developer to organize the content of a website or a web application. So a web app site map will tell you what will be on what will be on the home page, what will be in the about section, what will be on the login section, what will be in the contacts or section it's like a graph it's like a graph that tells you where this will be like an hierarchy a structure so if at any point in your design you are confused you can just go back to the site map okay okay where did i where did i say contact us will be where did i say settings will be so uh so benefits of a of a web site map web app site map so wait i just noticed something do you guys know difference between websites and web apps Have I lost connection? I I think website yeah, I is um, the normal one where you can do everything online. Why web app is just like Figma. Figma is a web app, I think. Mm. Mm. But you're not really 
explaining. Who wants to go? Okay, princess, go on. Okay, so I mean, I feel like websites are where websites are apps that are websites like you go to the internet and you check, but then web apps are progressive and you can actually have screenshots, you can actually have shortcuts on your home screen. Mm. Okay, and another person who was talking again. Um, I think websites, both the web app and websites, they, they are online. I think for okay. me, the only difference would probably be that web apps are applications that are created specifically to be downloaded, uh, come out to your computer and used on your computer with the internet, while uh, the website is just like a normal link uh, URL that we all go to, to to do something directly on the platforms with a um, link without okay. actually downloading their app onto our computer. Okay, so uh, Precious, please go on. Um, I think websites are uh, the ones we use in our browsers. Then uh, web apps, they are like uh, softwares that can run inside the browser. Hmm. <laughs> I said, um, my Ogatu said, um. Nobody's really giving me what I want. So does anybody want to go again? I don't want to tell you guys what it is. I don't know why. There's just something in my heart is telling me that I should not tell you. So yes, Adida, please go on. So, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right. So I think the major difference, uh, we're talking about website, uh, you're talking about um, web pages you can access online. Okay. Um, any page you can open online. When you're talking about web app, you're talking about um, applications. There are applications, but they are accessible through, uh, through your browser. So for example, um, Jumia, you can download the app, but it also has a web app that you can access online. You just go to jumia.com. So they are like applications, but they're not just available on the Play Store or whatever store people can download them from. You can also access them through your browsers and the internet and also use them the same way you use an app. So you don't necessarily need to download them to use them. So I think that's like different between websites and web app. Websites are just uh, web pages online. It could be any page you can open online. The web apps are, are applications accessible to your browsers, through the internet. And you don't necessarily have to download the software or the apps on your device. Okay. Thank you for the input, Adidayo. So this is what I'm going to do. Um, this should be like your number one daily challenge. I'm going to write, what is an app and what uh, what is a web app and what is a website and their differences do you understand what i'm saying we're going to talk about it tomorrow not today do you get me please say yes. it again yes so what a web app is what a website what's the website what's a web app and their differences Thank you. I'm going to talk about this today because we're running out of time. And I still have like uh, five more screens to go. So it says the benefit of a sitemap is it shows hierarchy of a page. A web app sitemap shows the hierarchy of a page on the website from the home page to the sub pages. That is, if in a in a in a home page, what would be under it? Like if we are if you click if you are in an home page, what are the things that you see? And if you are in a contact us page, what are the things that you see? So it says this helps designer and developer to organize the content and ensure that it is easy to navigate for users. So number two, it helps to plan the user journey. The sitemaps help you designer and 
developer to plan the user journey from the point where the user lands on the website to the point where they complete a specific action or goal. This ensures that the website is designed in a way that encourages users to navigate through it easily and reach their desired destination. So uh, the last one, which is the test, usability test or usability study. It's a research method that assesses how easy it is for participants to complete core tasks in a design. Like I said, if you've already, if you've already done your wireframe, you've done your high fidelity, you've done your low fidelity, then you have to test it out. Usability test. There are two types of usability test. Sorry, I'm talking fast, but I have to round up now. There are two types of usability test. You have the moderated and the un unmoderated. One thing you have to know about the two is that one is um one uh, one needs human assistance um un unmoderated does not need human assistance like moderate moderated now you leave them to get through the app on their own but unmoderated uh, but the unmoderated uh, but yeah unmoderated usability test participant no, test that as this one says that the prototype without the human guidance. So the unmoderated, there is no human guidance. Moderated, there is human guidance. Tips for writing interview question. Use the same sets of question for each interview. That is, if you want to do a test, number one, you cannot have one person. You have to use a lot of people that you interview. And you have to write questions for them, like a prompt. The prompt to be like, okay, maybe if you're if you're going to do an interview interview for a usability test and you want to test on your website, so you, uh, I said website on your digital product, so you just give them the app and just say, okay, um, check out and um, order something or transfer, depending on the depending on the type of digital product that you have, maybe fintech, educat, uh, edutech, or stuff like that. You just tell them to perform an action in that in that app to see if they are able to do it. So you 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 write interview question, you write prompt. So when they've done all those things, then you start asking them questions. Don't ask uh, open uh, don't ask close-ended questions like ah okay. So do you not like the app? No, you cannot say it like that. They will say they like it. So that's 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 not good enough. So you have to ask open-ended question. Okay, how was navigating? How did you find the app? What can you say about the app? What, what, what are your struggles? What do you think should improve on it? So encourage elaboration. When they say, um, how did you how did you find the navigation? They might say it was tough. Okay, how so? What are the things that you see? You know, it was tough because I thought I could swipe. I was swiping and swiping. I couldn't. I couldn't get to the next screen. But then. After a long while, and I decided to click, I, I, I just hope that there should be a swipe option. So if you do not ask them for elaboration, they will not tell you those kind of things. So ask the same question from different angle. Don't mention that they are, they are other users and don't ask leading questions. So if you are doing a usability test, you need KPIs. What are KPIs? KPIs are key performance in, in indicators. KPIs are metrics that are collected to evaluate and measure the success of your design. They, they indicate how close you are close to your goal. So KPIs are time on task. So how long did it take them to complete the task? When you said, when you said that up to, to navigate from one screen to another screen, how, how long was it? That's, that's a key performance indicator. Then the use of navigation slash search. When you tell them to, on your FinTech app, when you tell them to transfer, did they search for transfer or did they look for transfer? So you said the number of people who use a, a website or app navigation compared to the number of people who use the search functionality. Of course, search um, a app, a digital product always have search functions. Not most people use it, but you have to know if they are using the search, probably because they are confused. Then user error rate indicates the part of design that causes users to make errors. You have to take note of that too. Then drop off rate. How many users abandoned the experience? Maybe they got tired and they drop it off at one point. Then it says conversion rate. It measures the percentage users who complete a desired action. Then 
system usability skill that one is a questionnaire that measures the usability of your design so you have to pick uh, pick one out of this kpi to measure your own to measure your own um, usability so if, if it is drop off rate that you want to use or all of them you can even use all of them if you want to i hope you understand because i'm rounding up now um mr davis i'm, I'm done David, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you very much. I guess um you guys um you guys enjoy the class and then you have something to hold on to. Well, um this is our daily challenge for today. We've talked more about design process. Hello, can you guys hear me? <clears throat> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. We can hear you, sir. All right. Thank you. So, um, basically, we've talked more about the um, design process, and then um, we we discuss the five frameworks that you can easily use to navigate your design process, which which are the empathize, the divine, the idea, prototype, and test. All thanks to any of that for giving us a, a breakdown of what all these things looks like. So um, with that in note, we are going to have our daily challenge. This is one of the things, this is what we are gonna be submitting tomorrow morning when we converge again. So using the prompt, create a user persona. So the first thing you need to do is to create a user persona. And more so, I how I wish I'm going to throw a question. Maybe I'll send it to your group. I'll send a question to you, and then um, from uh, from the attendance today, I will divide you guys into three. That does not mean you are doing a group work. You are doing individual work, but it's going to be a three question, giving you one of them, and then after that. <laughs> You can create your user persona with that project. That's the project I'm I'm going to um, um, give to individual. It's not going to be one one question. I mean, it's going to be a three project, um, but everybody's going to pick one out of it. But I'll pick for you. I'll just randomly pick actually. So you are creating an empathy map. You are also creating a user story and a user journey map we are on a journey actually we are on a journey and then we are trying to build up something so you are creating a user journey map you should create a problem statement and also user flow competitive audit so according to what she said the other time she's going to send you a template of the competitive audit and other things like um the journey map and probably um Anything she has, you can just drop it for you guys on the group. So I think that really will help you navigate and quickly sort your daily challenge. So do you guys have any question? Anybody with any question? So we can quickly treat in the next four minutes before we round up to this class. I assume there is no question. I assume there is no question. So don't forget, um, make sure you look out for, um, so you have question. Okay, go ahead with your question. Okay, uh, my question is, um, the user person to create, is this, uh, like I said, they're going to um, group or like three per group is it the questions you send or they're going to create the user question or we just do that how uh, oh, i wish i can understand your question but i am struggling to hear you well i don't know if i'm the only one i don't know if i'm the only one can you just quickly type it out or you go to a silent place to to ask your question because I can hear some background noise. Uh, 
Okay. You are asking questions based on user personas that you are to create. So like, what? I, I, like I, I don't really understand what you just said now about group. You know, but not like we're working as a group or we're working individually. So I don't really understand how it falls into this challenge we're to do. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll give you a project topic. Hmm? So after that, you are going to create all this challenge, like a persona, an empathy map, a user story, um, a user journey map, problem statement, user flow, competitive audit with the project given to you. And remember, it is individual project, not group project. Let me just use it that way so that I won't confuse matter anymore. It's going to be individual project, but two people can hold on to one project, but I want it individually. For example, um, Duro Simis or Dick and, um, and uh, someone I, I can still, okay, <clears throat> I can still say, okay, for example, Duro, Duro Simis or Dick and Kola, they are going to be having the same project, but that doesn't mean they are going to do it collectively, like they are going to do it in group. They would, he is going to do his own, Colado is going to do his own separately. So it's individual tax, not group tax, though they might be having the same project topic, but it is individual. So we are going to throw, um, group you guys. When you see the group, you see your project topic there, just quickly, you create your user persona, you create an empathy map, and then wherever it, it continues like that. I guess you understand it now. Did I answer your question? Yes, thank you. All right. Any other question? It's 12 already. So we just need to um we just need to call it today. Any other question? I assume there is no other question. Make sure you fill the attendance, your name is there, and then see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.